I do believe there is an element of faith to life. There's an element of God is unexplainable. It's, it is a concept that you can't put into words. I mean, it's, I think, a, a really interesting idea to make a documentary and ask people what they think what God is because I don't believe you can actually explain it. I'm convinced that calling God Allah is blasphemy. Many will say that Allah and God are the same deity. However, it can't be true. God is famously irrational, famously beyond reason. This not very successful Arab carpenter annoyed the authorities, pissed them off, they executed him. Three days later, he jumps on a cloud and hops off to heaven. That's a basis for entirely successful cultures? Apparently so. To fight is obligatory on every Muslim and it is written down in the Qur'an, whether though you may not like it. Itbah al Yahud means slaughter the Jews. I think God is overrated. Religion is politicized. To kill a homosexual is a good action in the sight of God. The problem is not with God, the problem is with us. Paradise and hell is not far. It is inside ourselves. War. 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 War, oppression, terrorism, poverty, and justice, peace and love, karma. God. God is a criminal to create so many religions to fight with each other. <sighs> the heart of man is really the heart of God. Knowledge seems to be flowing at an unprecedented rate. Wisdom seems to ebb at an unprecedented rate. Truth is being diluted by too many voices, all keen to reference the name of God. But what exactly is God? I decided to go around the world and ask people what they think. I'm a spirit-filled, born-again Christian. God is my protector, my everything, my provider, my best friend. He is everything. My God is a Christian God, and when you really study God's Word, as in the Bible, it shows you where throughout history um, that the only time God's people have been disarmed is when they were in direct rebellion against God. So you can see that I'm not in real rebellion because I have lots of arms. <laughs> did God create man or did man create God? I don't know. But my possibility is, yeah, we're all part of God. We're all God ourselves. If there is one God, we should all be brothers. Guns are not weapons, it's a tool just as a screwdriver can be used to build a chair, but it can also be used as a weapon. It's what's behind it, not what it is. We don't use the W word. <laughs> we tend to project our image and imagine God to have a sensory function and a motor function like we do, so we can communicate and have a personal relationship. And we tend to project onto God those things that support our values and instead of those things that challenge our values. God is not a religion. And so I don't care if you're Baptist or Methodist or non-denominational or Catholic or Jewish, I believe that the only way is Jesus Christ. And if you don't believe in Jesus as, and he's not your Lord and Savior, then you're not saved. The truth is your opponent is yourself. 
do you think there's one God for the Muslims and the Jews and the uh, Hindus and the Sikhs, uh, the same guy as yours? No. And when you finally embrace yourself, you love the people. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and ye shall be saved. Ducking and diving The blues as they come Forever fighting Never have won Always outnumbered I believe that God is a holy man, a man that brings blessing to all that are open to healing. God, to me, brings blessings to this earth. The medicine that he gives us, the medicine that he has is to help teach humankind, help each other, to help one another and to pray for one another. When I think of God, I think that he's created only one race, and that race is the human race. Uh, in my culture, we call God Allah. 9-11 has made all the Muslims look like uh, terrorists. Mall uh, look like suspects. And it's not going to stop for, for a long time, because there is a fear that everybody has that belief might do something bad and harm this country, which is absolutely not true. What scares me the most is, is uh, what if something again happened in this great country? And that question always uh, runs in my head, you know, what's going to happen to us? My perception of God is that it is this uh, infinite energy, uh, and you can see that through looking at nature, and looking at uh, human beings, uh, looking at your reflection. I think God is pretty much everywhere, and, and it's constantly showing us confirmation of its existence. What's your take on paradise, Jack? I'm pretty much convinced that this is it. Um, I can't imagine better than this. Now that doesn't mean that there isn't better than this, but I can't imagine it. I was walking around about 10 years ago at Caesar's Palace, and a guy came up to me and he said, can you please fix my son's headaches? And I looked at him and he says, no, I'm serious. I." My son has headaches, and I want you to cure him for me. I said, what do you mean? Uh, you know, he says, well, uh, I've been to every doctor in the world. Uh, I have lots of money, and uh, I just need your help because I know you can do it. And I said, well, you know I'm an illusionist. What I do is create the illusion of enhanced reality. Uh, he says, yeah, I know, I know, but, but, but I need you to cure my son's headaches. I couldn't help him. Uh, I was very flattered by the fact that my magic looked so real to him that it gave him uh, an element of hope. But I realized that, you know, if I was alive many centuries ago and was maybe a little disreputable, maybe I would have <laughs> been encouraged to kind of start my own religion. I can understand how a guy would want to not just sell tickets in a theater. They would take that ability and have many followers rather than ticket buyers. I could understand how that line got crossed a lot. It's amazing that I still believe in a higher power after the knowledge that I have about the many biblical things that could be created by someone who had the ability that I have. I don't know that I've defined God um, 
except possibly as that which is bigger than than we are. Seems pretty lame, doesn't it? That's what exasperates me about these ideas. You know, you can only accept them on a very, you know, primitive belief basis. I think God is a good construct to give uh, an explanation to things we don't understand. You know, and that's what they all say, the mystery of faith. Well, it's mysterious because, you know, it makes no f***ing sense. I neither believe in God nor uh, disbelieve in God. I don't believe in God. Not, it's, it's rubbish. You know, why are you looking for a reason? You know, that, that cat isn't looking for a reason for going meow, you know, that's it. You know, we say meow all the bloody time, but we pretend it, it, it makes sense. It's not I'm a nihilist, it's, you know, I'm not on a crusade. You asked me to do this film, I have a very pedestrian point of view. I don't believe in God. I think believing in God is an impediment to living this life. Uh, people who believe in God, good luck to them, well done. Um, you know, don't impose your views on me, I won't on you. You know, great. I'm not a militant atheist. Uh, I'm not a passionate, hardcore extremist atheist. I'm not an angry atheist. Um, but I have been an atheist, and I've only lapsed when I've taken LSD. I don't know that I could tell you what God is, but I will say, uh, having said all that, that uh, when the plane, when the jet plane takes off, I always say a prayer. <laughs> Why is one club more important than another club? Is the god that your club worships the same god that members of another club worship? Perhaps god doesn't exist at all. Perhaps god is a way to give validity to a bunch of lost souls who wish to belong to something. Do we have to belong to a club? We were a small family living on the outskirts of a township outside Lahore and uh, next to a Muslim village. And suddenly communities which had been friendly and lived together for decades and centuries were at each other's throats. And my, I remember my mother coming to me in the evening with two swords in her hand and said, you sleep with these under your pillow. And your younger sister, who was about five at that time, will sleep on the next bed. And if you're attacked by the Muslims, you kill as many as you can. And uh, if you find you're being overpowered, kill your sister and then kill yourself. What is God, guys? What is God? Yes. God is a very wonderful, he's amazing, wonderful. God is so wonderful. God is wonderful. He has given us many things. He has created the atmosphere, nature, trees, mountains, water, and air. Teachers, our parents. We, the human beings, are the most loveliest creature of God in the world. God is everywhere. Everyone is given by God. Everyone is from God. I see God in myself. God is in our heart. And I feel God in my heart. He is almighty. He is present everywhere. But he mostly present in the heart of human beings. But when we disobey him, he give us punishment. I am a Christian. Uh, my religion is uh, Muslim. I am a Hindu. Every religion has many names of God. But I think that God is only one. But God is only one. I think God is one. God is one. And we can say in different names. That is the duty of we the grown-ups to teach the students the meaning of 
the Lord Almighty. God has not created religions. I am a Muslim and I am a Hindu. He has created humans. I believe that there is one God and I also believe that there is only one God. Trust God, do the good things, help others, love your neighbor and these are the things through which we can approach God. I don't think it's easy to define God. Let it be according to the individual what, what he thinks of God or what he doesn't think about God. It's quite surprising. Every religion professes love for humanity. But why do religions fight? Yet is not able to tolerate somebody else practicing a different type of religion. For somebody who's deeply religious, basically, it's very difficult to explain. But the fact is that religions do fight, there have been wars over religions, people have killed each other. But what if you ask them, why did you fight? I don't think they'll be able to answer that question. I am burning inside when I'm seeing all these fights. It's only ego. My God, the name I attribute to God is the only name. He's only Allah. He's only Krishna. He's only Christ. He's only this, he's only that. I know. Nobody can know. It is just like a drop saying, well, I know the ocean. Ocean can see the drop, but drop cannot come near the ocean. She's feeling as if she's got a fever, she's shaking, she feels very cold. We've arranged for the stretcher to come and pick her up because I don't think she can walk. So we're going to take her on the stretcher with the air doctors. And then if she needs to be admitted, we're going to admit her to Maheshwari Hospital. Why do you spend your life going around disease-ridden tents? Because there's so much suffering that isn't being addressed and people aren't taken care of that I try to take care of the people who are suffering where there isn't any other option for them. When I was very young, I grew up Catholic and I think the influence of the nuns and charity and good qualities were emphasized. I think what I've seen is that no matter what religion you are, there are many God-conscious people. And I feel that God is the same to everyone. It's just the leaders who seem to lose sight of the true God-consciousness through gaining power that they are maybe lost. There is some greater power above us. This thought makes a man humble. Saves him from the ego, the pitfalls of life. The greatest enemy of the man is the ego. I feel that people are being taken advantage of by the power intoxicated leader sometimes, especially when the people are so wonderful and so devout, so dedicated, so God conscious, trying to do what's best, trying to do what's right. The leaders of religion could empower people to do so much good in the world, even if they would just tell them to each do one kind act to another person each day. If we all helped each other, the world be, would be a different place. Here and now is life's eternal crown. 
I, the dreamer, the dreamer, who looks into the pool. Our form of gods are not one god. It all numbers of gods. God is a spiritual being. And when it's a spiritual being, it is the creator of the land and everything that is on it and in it. God is the earth. The earth is what provides you anything you want. All the resources is coming out of the soil and the Mother Earth must supply it. The Mother Earth is the book. Open the page and read it. Cultural framework are given by the heroes. Dreamtime heroes, these are the same people who have given us the spiritual beliefs and the, the dreaming track in song, in art and in uh, bungu, the dance. Do you pray to God? Not necessarily in, in the way that Western world pray about God. We sing about God. We sing about God. We highlight our existence through having that connection. Me, I call it uh, that higher power, spirit in control, and I got my own personal relationship with Him. Yeah. When we walk through the bush, we speak to the tree to provide us honey, the sugar bag. We talk to the tree, say, <laughs> and a few minutes later, when we pray to the tree, he provides us with a sugar bag. God can be a man or woman. when the Christians came to Australia and put that religion on Aboriginal people, they broke every one of their Ten Commandments. I've spoken to some incredibly wise people. The wisest of them said to me, said, you know, no matter what we talk about, don't hold on to it. Just let the sound of my voice, just listen to the sound. And somewhere in the sound is the truth. really listening. It's the space. It's the space between words. The experience of God is restful. It's, I feel, uh, rejuvenating the truth. When you're abusing that spirit that lives inside your body, you've got no connection with the spirit. I mean, look at the wars in the world, man. You know, it's about religion and land. That's what all the wars in this world start from, religion and land. When I die, I go back to the crocodile nest. That's where the egg was laid. That's where I was born. In our way, we say Jogaba. That's a heaven for Aboriginal people. You know? Any more questions? I don't know God, but I know in my imagination, God is the supreme, God is the almighty, he is the creator of the universe. He preserve it, and then, if it is time to come, he dissolve it. Why do you think so many religions fight each other in the name of God? It's all a form of tribalism. It has nothing to do with God itself. This is not a conflict of religion. Hindu, peace. Islam, peace. Christianity, they're all peace. 
but now the followers. We're primitive little animals. We haven't a clue about ourselves or about the effulgence of existence in which we find ourselves in. If we are fish living at the bottom of a very dark sea and we're vaguely aware of light, mainly bioluminescence from other fish, we will see these glimmers going past us. Some very bioluminescent fish will go past us, above us, and lots of us will follow it as the brightest light. But still, with little idea of what the luminosity is like on the surface of the sea. So, as I say, God for me is more a direction, an indication of a course, rather than a continent or a destination. God, we call it Yang Widi. You cannot see, you cannot even imagine. It's a sacrilege to put a name on him because he doesn't belong to the area of thought, of language, of mind. If you feel that you can name it, you haven't understood it at all. I believe there's an arrogance um, that human beings can comprehend what God is. And I think at, at this time in the human evolution, it's beyond our ability to understand God. I think we need to feel God, not to understand God. Home to local Buddhists and refugees from Tibet, and nestled between mountain ranges that could be right out of Lord of the Rings, lies Ladakh, otherwise known as Little Tibet. Perhaps God has something to do with the excitement of the unknown. When you are a child, there are so many unanswered questions. Every day is an adventure full of powerful, swinging emotions. As we grow up, we miss these intense reactions to our everyday world. Life can become mundane. Many of us try to compensate, to live life with the intensity we remember we felt as a child. Alcohol, drugs, sex, and religion are some of the tools we use in an attempt to fill that vacuum. Maybe that's why so many people's lives are governed by the search for something greater than the sum of all their parts. We're in the middle of the Himalayas on top of the world. Hello! Trekking around here makes you very out of breath. The air is extremely thin and it's extremely cold. So much so that shooting is very, very hard because every time I touch the camera with bare hands, uh, my skin gets stuck to it. But anyway, it's worth it. 
uh, other people think it's worth it as well because they put a lot of prayer flags up because they really consider this place to be very close to God. I can, I can imagine why. It's, uh, it's absolutely stunning. Dia sangat mempunyai tenaga yang cukup dan dia cikcik nak ada tuan, macam cuma nak bercuti sampai pihak dia akan jumpa cikcik. Siapa nak? Tiada siapa nak. Ngaji tak pun, ngaji tak akan aku sedih. Nolak mana? Ati ini nak kunci apa? Dikubah cecap cecap cecap. Ngata kunci apa? Dikai nan ding nata ada kunci macam apa? Kunci kunci apa? Cetiji dan nigi tangan. From a Buddhist standpoint, the idea of a soul is that there's something constant, permanent, moving through. And this is what the Buddhist tradition largely is rejecting. Buddhist way is to strip all concepts. It's to take concepts away from your mind and just be with bare attention to life. You look at things as they are, not the way you think they should be. In many cases, the Buddha clearly said, there's no self. In fact, he instructed his monks again and again, you should remember whatever you're referring to or thinking of or identifying with or becoming attached to or involved with. This is not me, this is not mine, I am not this. You know, I heard one guy say, uh, Carl Jung, he was so great. He was asked, uh, do you still believe in God? And he said, no. He says, I know. When you look around the world and you wonder where things all come from, that would be an indication that there must have been some origin. And for me, it would make sense that that origin was in God. What is God? I think my, my earliest connection with God was that he was going to punish me if I was bad. But very soon I, I went to convent school and I learned that God was good. God was goodness. And all goodness came from God. And we had to be good to please God. And I was caught very early. They say when the Jesuits get you before you're six that they have you for life. And they got me for life. Without trying to be smart, I suppose also you could ask the question, what, ev what evidence is there that God doesn't exist? Out of many reasons to believe in God, there are four that seem to stick out. One, we have no idea how we got here. Therefore, God is the creator. Two, good deeds buy you a place in heaven. Therefore, God is the policeman. Three, fear of death. One sure thing happens when we die. Our bodies rot. The rest is speculation. Therefore, God is the giver of eternal life. Four, when things go wrong, many dismiss horrendous outcomes by saying it was God's will. Therefore, God is the scapegoat. Why I'm preaching here in Mass? I'm following the footsteps of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus.
Jesus showed us the way to heaven. If all these people were not uh, converted to Christianity, well, if Jesus came even today, all of them, they will go to hell. I believe with my own heart that my spirit will go direct to heaven where God is. And those non-believers, they will go to, 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 to hell. in East Africa, and I'm with my new best friend, John Lankoy, who's our guide and mentor in this beautiful savanna, which is inhabited by a tribe called the Maasai. I, I was ranting and raving, John, about our interview with Peter, the priest, who's a very well-meaning man, but he did say that he was going around telling Maasai that unless they converted to Christianity, they were going to go to hell, and they wouldn't be saved, and they would, and they would not go to heaven. Um, that, that's that's a bit strong, isn't it? It's strong. When I saw young guy, I was very angry. I said, "I didn't like you. You were my enemy." I'm born here, I'm serving God here, trying to convert them to Christianity. When we try and impose our ideas of how things work on other cultures, generally it won't work. We can't bomb them into it, we can't coerce them into it, we can't blackmail them into it, because we're running against the cultural grain. And I think whoever who tries to force another one, the way of worshiping God, is a liar. And we're currently in the country of Kenya, but we're gonna go somewhere. We're gonna travel to the country of Tanzania. So, do you wanna go to Tanzania? Yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go to Tanzania. <laughs> oh, we're in Tanzania. Here we are. Yeah, we are. Actually, you know, I've just thought of something. This is illustrative of something I'm doing in the film, and that is boundaries are drawn by man and not by God. Because a minute ago, we were in Kenya, and it feels exactly the same as being in Tanzania. Sure. So who's to say where we are apart from man? You know, this thing about property and territory and borders, and people saying, well, this is mine and this is yours. That's my God. I can't believe in your God. Try to have ownership of that. We own nothing. We're caretakers. Turn around and go away. It's the motto of the day. I've been, um, I have to start again. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. We started early this morning, went very far north, we turned back turn around and go away. And so we started doing, you know, little forays to try and get in. We succeeded in several areas, only to be turned away further down the road. There is no one definitive line between the Palestinian territories and Israel. It's much more complicated here than you can ever imagine. Because there's so many pockets of different um, areas in the Palestinian territories. There's A, which is the Palestinian Authority, B is a mixture of Israeli and Palestinian, and then there's Israel itself. And each boundary between each of the pockets is a checkpoint. And every time we, we, we come to a checkpoint, and there seems to be a checkpoint every mile or so, it's like, no, you can't come through, turn around and go away. The world hasn't came to the confession that the attempt of creating a Palestinian state has failed. We don't see a state called Palestine. What we see is a state of psychosis. The problem is not uh, on a religious basis. It's uh, 
course, a land conflict. The trouble with, with religion today is that there's just enough of it for people to learn to hate each other, but not enough for them to learn to love each other. When you have nothing to prove and you are comfortable with your situation in your mind and your heart, you seek love. When you are scared and afraid and weak inside and your defense mechanism starts to work, you can go for the kill. A God that can ask his followers in his name to murder and maim and commit acts of terror, I don't believe is really the same God. God not do the, 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 the wrong things. God only do the, the right things. I fear that some people may have stepped over the border and may be worshiping something quite different. When the people open mind and they, they understand each other, there is no conflict. Here, you know, in this place, the history of God enters in the history of man. God doesn't reveal himself in any creature, in any part of creation, but in the relations between the parts of creations, in the relations between me and my wife, between me and my neighbor. The word of God had become flesh here in this place because God wants to be beside the man, so as to give him a sense for his life. Between my people and the Palestinians. So I suggested you would focus your camera to God himself, to the open space between us between us. This crisis should not be ended unless our refugees should come back to their homes. We should get our right in building our independent state with Jerusalem as capital. There must be some state for Palestinians. The vast majority of Israelis and Jews have no problem with that and would be quite relieved to wake up one morning and find a peaceful Palestinian state living next, next door to them. How we arrive at that is another matter. First, my name is Ibrahim Ahmad Hassan Abu Hawa. I'm an Arab, Palestinian Muslim. I born here, I grow here all my life. How you can love your neighbor if you don't know him? And now we have some problem, it's called the wall. It's not the wall what the government built it. We have a wall, we build it between one another because we don't visit one another. God built into the fabric of creation a final utopian existence. In that existence, either there will be an independent Palestinian state, so the Palestinians won't care anymore about it, but everybody will be holding hands and singing Kumbaya in Yiddish. You see the open space. I don't represent God. Ibrahim don't represent God. The victorious, the victorious formula is that nobody represent God. God is between us. There. There. I'm surprised. I was expecting people to say, my God is greater than your God. I deserve this land. You don't. Go away. I will fight for my land. No. They were going, we need to find reconciliation. We need to find a solution. We need to find that God is in the gap between people. God is in the gap between the Jews and the Christians, the Hindus the Maasai, and everybody else that I've shot on this film. And I feel kind of good here with my Maasai wristband, my Sikh bangles in the Palestinian territories, having interviewed a Jewish rabbi. Isn't that what life's about? But ask your Muslim friends in the Middle East, if they had a Palestinian state, what rights would be given to Jews or Christians? How many Arab states today will allow a Jew to live there? For me, as a Jewish person, if I call my God by saying Allah, 
it's exactly what I I want. I mean, I see no contradiction to pray or to express my faith by sharing with my Muslim compatriots the name of Allah. For me, it's the same. Thousands of human sacrifices were made in Tikal. They were taken to these shaped drums, stones, so-called altars, and then they were placed belly down, positioned with their legs up, and then their hands tight on their backs. The priest came and then with the Flintstone axe, they just severed the head. These Mayas taken as a honor to be sacrificed, to start that trip, that journey to the underworld. Coming to the ruins of an ancient Mayan civilization makes me ponder the significance of time. Since before the birth of Christ until about 900 AD, the Mayan people were sacrificing human beings to their gods, a fast track to the afterlife. And it was an honor to have your heart ripped out. But what has changed today? Is a suicide bomber any more sophisticated? The human bomb storm came in after the jihad took place in Afghanistan after the Soviet entered Afghanistan. Young boys are taken in the madrasas and in the training camps. Welcome to 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 the training camps. मिलेगी और कुछ नहीं अगर दुश्मन है जो आपका उसके खिलाफ लड़ो जो आप पर जुल्म करता है मैं तो अनपढ़ था मुझे यही सिखाया कि अल्लाह ताला यही कहता है कि जात करो अल्लाह ताला आपके साथ होगा और कियामत के दिन अल्लाह ताला इसका अजर देगा लोगों को मारो ये करो वो करो बाद में ये सिखाया है There's nowhere in the Quran that says that a person who uh, gives up their life um, the cause of Islam will get seven conversions. It doesn't exist. But it could be uh, maybe uh, it's a translation thing uh, in that it's not 72 virgins but one 72-year-old virgin. Jihad is against internal evils in a man. Jihad means struggle uh, in the part of Allah or to fight in the cause of Allah. But uh, in the Quran, it says that you should not kill anybody. Unless it is an unjust cause. And but so Christianity and Judaism is an unjust cause? Unjust cause. It is? Yes. The Quran specifically says to take one innocent life is as if you take the life of all of humanity. As a historian, I, I'm always conscious that there seems to be financial reasons for most, for most wars. Um, but they're very often fought throughout history in God's name. There is ideological corruption, there is financial corruption, there is political corruption, but the worst of them is the religious corruption, where you use religion to serve your own desires and hidden agendas. Bueno, mi, mi religión es católica y para mí Dios es un ser supremo. Para mí Dios es una fuerza muy grande de fe. Yeah. Es una es fe que le da sentido a tu vida. Y es como una fuerza que te da amor y felicidad. Dios yo creo que es de alguna manera algo creado para manipular a la gente. Soy Monseñor Diego Monroy Ponce, vicario general y episcopal de Guadalupe y rector de la insigne y nacional Basílica de Guadalupe. Nos encontramos precisamente en el Tepeyac, en el corazón 
como decía nuestro querido Papa Juan Pablo II, no solo de la mexicanidad, sino del continente de América. Envió a la Santísima Virgen María 1500 años después de la encarnación del Divino Verbo. I'm in Mexico City and I'm attending the annual pilgrimage to the Virgin of Guadalupe. You see what happened in 1531 is her image miraculously appeared on the robe of a peasant. You can see it behind me on that big poster. Y le dice Juan Dieguito Quiero que vayas a la casa del obispo y le pidas que me edifiquen aquí un templecito, una casita, para en ella mostrar al que es amor. Lo escucha el obispo, evidentemente que no le cree. Juan Dieguito regresa, se encuentra con la señora por la tarde, le cuenta el resultado de su entrevista, de su encuentro con el obispo y le dice a la señora, Ven mañana, te voy a dar la prueba. Y al entregarle las rosas, al abrir su tilma, al caer las rosas, milagrosamente queda estampada en su ayate, en su tilma, esta hermosa imagen de la dulce señora del cielo que contemplamos aún hoy en día en esta insignia nacional basílica de Guadalupe. Bueno, Dios para mí es, yo considero que es alguna manera en que desde un comienzo se creó el concepto de Dios como algo de fe para tener un control sobre las masas, sobre la sociedad, dividido en diferentes religiones, en, en distintos dioses, pero buscando el mismo punto, el mismo, la misma meta que es controlar y mantener unida a la sociedad y de alguna manera este, yo creo que es un negocio, yo creo que Dios es un negocio, Dios es, yo creo que Dios es dinero, I mean, God is money, recuperan dinero, obtienen dinero, sino que es un, es un monopolio, es de alguna manera el controlar a, a nivel mundial a la sociedad, y bueno, eso considero que es Dios principalmente. Velador a sus recuerdos. You know, religion, Peter, has become business, big business. And the moment that that kind of organization takes place, people want more territory. They want more power. They want more money. They want to be able to do more than they've done before. When AIDS is rife in Africa, yeah. do you think it's right that the Catholic Church should dissuade people from using condoms? Um, what's your take on that one? It's a very, very difficult issue because uh, It's a hard teaching. Chastity or abstinence and fidelity is probably the, and in fact, most certainly the wisest course. We believe as Catholics that life is, is a gift. But obviously not everybody can follow that and not everybody feels that they're able to go along with that way of thinking. So you were saying that you would condone the use of condoms even though that, that doesn't seem to be the true line of the Catholic Church. Well, if I could put it slightly in a more nuanced way, I wouldn't be in a situation or a condition to condemn. Holy Spirit. There is something innate in man that seeks God, and we believe that God created us with this desire for Him. I find the belief in God is very comforting because it gives you a sense of proportion so that rather than see myself as the center of every problem and every solution, I can see that I'm only a cog in a greater machine. Some people say, well, why doesn't the Catholic Church sell St. Peter's and all that's in it and give to the poor? Well, it's because as Catholics, we see everything that's beautiful, even the things that we make with our own hands, as a reflection of God. One of the popes, Nicholas V, who lived in the middle of the 15th century, said that if the church were to build fine buildings and monuments and provide a beautiful liturgy, people would be attracted to the church. These things on earth that are created elevate our souls. And as we know in the world today, there's still so much poverty. However, I do think 
to the church's credit, we do a lot of charitable work in the world, much more than secular governments. Sometimes the answer comes in a roundabout way through people, through signals, through ideas, through concepts. But they certainly don't come with thunderbolts from heaven, but very rarely. Do you think that Christians will go to heaven? No. Do you think that the Jews will go to heaven? No. Do you think that anybody who is non-Muslim will go to heaven? No. So you think the only way to get to heaven is through Allah and leading the life of a Muslim? That's right. Why do you think that? Because this is what is revealed in the Quran. This is what the Quran explained to me. It does say in the Quran that the Christians and the Jewish people will be in the fire forever. Uh, would you mind reading me that passage? Because I just don't. Uh... I have to look in the ayah, uh, in the in the in the I'd Quran to find this ayah. Because... If you wait. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, love to. This is a chapter of the Quran, uh, numerically number 98, and it is called Bayina, which means the explanation. My name is Jihad Turk, and I am the Imam or religious director of the Islamic Center of Southern California. <laughs> this is a problem that we face as Muslims from both the non-Muslim community and from Muslims themselves. Misinterpretation taken out of context and just lack of education about the Quran overall, the teachings of the Quran as a whole. There is no doubt the people of the book, i.e. the Christians and the Jewish, and the people who set up rivals and partners to Allah, they will forever go to the fire of hell to stay there forever, and they are the worst of the people. Let me read the Arabic and the translation, the correct translation. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين في نار جهنم خالدين فيها أولئك هم شر البرية. Allah always speak the truth, and that is the statement. Uh, Surah 98 of the Quran. Verily, those individuals who are bent on denying the truth from the people of the book, i.e. Jews and Christians, or from amongst the polytheists, they are destined to abide in the fire of Jehennam. They are truly the worst of creatures. The important part of this verse is the first part which says those who are bent on denying the truth. The Quran guarantees anyone who is bent on denying the truth a consequence in the hereafter, including Muslims. So accepting Islam is not a ticket to heaven, and not accepting Islam is not a ticket to hell, because chapter 2, verse 62 in the Quran clearly states that whoever believes in God, Jews or Christians, uh, whoever believes in God and the Day of Judgment and does good deeds has nothing to fear for their soul, nor shall they grieve. What does the word Islam mean? Peace. Well, I think it's a false premise to assume what they say is peace really is peace. Islamic apologists in the West will say Islam means peace. It's like the communists said, uh, we want peace, a piece of this country and the piece of that country and put it all together. But the Arabic word Islam, from Aslama yastaslimu istislam, the, the root word of the word Islam means submission or surrender to the will of Allah. There is Dar al-Islam and Dar al-Kharb. It's either Islam or the sword. And they will kill Jew or Gentile or anyone who refuses to accept their philosophy. 
Allah is very tolerant and he is inviting the non-Muslims um, to his religion Islam because what Allah is saying, if you don't accept Islam, then you will have a very painful punishment forever after your death. And shouldn't we be loving the Muslims like our neighbors? Oh, I love the Muslims. I'd love to lead them to Christ. But I don't, I don't want them coming to my, my home and cutting off the heads of my children. I would just like to say to all those ignorant people out there, and you know who you are, just take five minutes of your time to find out about our religion and what our religion stands for, right? And then, when you fully understand what our religion is about and what our people is about and where we come from, and you understand what the fanatics are doing, then I think you'll be able to differentiate between the two, that they are fanatics who use violence and murder and whatever to get what they want. That's not what our religion preaches. What's happening to Islam, to Islam indeed is it's been hijacked by a bunch of extremists who are having no knowledge of the truth of Islam, who are being, I am sad to say, they're being promoted by the biased media. Give them a, a bloody uh, scene and give them a beautiful love scene. Which one will they film? And so they bring them to the fore and introduce them as the Muslim clerics. The problem is we don't have our outlets for our message in terms of mass media. And so we thought we'd d divide something clever by issuing a fatwa against terrorism, but unfortunately this story didn't make the headlines. It is upsetting indeed. I think that now it's time to retake over of our God. What does it mean to be Muslim? What does it mean to be Jewish? Or what does it mean to be Christian? And what does it mean to live together? The power generated when human beings congregate at a church, a synagogue, a temple or a mosque is undeniable. Perhaps this power is a result of their bonding ritual rather than the God they are there to worship. And if that is true, then maybe all of us are collectively what we refer to as God. When we believe we're living in the midst of heartless, I'm sure we'll become happy. There is no God at all, according to the Buddhism. I became a monk at the age of 28. I'm living in the happiness of pleasure. What is God? What is God? The essence of nature. That's all. Our fundamental being is selflessness, so we have no enemy at all. Fundamental experience of emptiness. Nothing, 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 nothing. We have no problem at all. In other words, we, we are all perfect being, no problems.
increase abundant. You are bad thinking. Negative thinking. This is a shortcut to go to the paradise. Wakarimasu ka ne, kore ne? He told us that I had some sort of tumor and that, and then we went to a surgeon and he said that it was a cancer tumor. Did that scare you? Yeah, it kind of did. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. When you believe in God he, and pray to him that he can really help you and he gets you through tough times. And I'm here because I have cancer, well had cancer, and this is my last thing of chemo. When I'm weak, he help, he makes me stronger. What is your biggest, your biggest wish today? For all the wars and, and all the fighting that's going on in the world to stop. Well, the problem with the world is not religion. It's religions. That's the whole thing. Nobody bothered to sit down and read the book. Try to access your scriptures by yourself. We have been conditioned, imprisoned by priests and the politicians. They are the criminals in my eyes. Let no priest stand between you and the scripture. Learn from Buddha, learn from Christ, learn from Krishna, learn from Muhammad, everybody. But let it be from your own heart. If you put Buddha, Jesus Christ, Socrates, Shakespeare, Arjuna, Krishna at a dinner table together, I can't see him having any argument. Religion is like a ladder. It can help you to get onto the roof. But once you're on the roof, you don't need the religion. You can hand the ladder over to somebody else. Our knowledge is very, very limited. We think we know a lot. We may be learned, but we are not wise. And as soon as somebody tells you who God is, mistrust them.
give me an insight to where I should be. You destroy my fears. You dry up my tears. And you comfort me. Try out my 